Any resources to study comp sci? I honestly think the best way to do it is to open an interpreter or REPL and just go to work. In fact, if you go to replit.com, um, I didn't realize this, but REPLIT is like incredibly intricate now. It used to be, I used to think it was, I made the mistake of thinking it was like JS Fiddle or something. It's actually remarkably great. It's interesting that you have to kind of sign in. Sign up, log in, I don't even know. Is there a difference? Okay. So, yeah, this is Replit. You can basically learn how to code from here to making like a fully featured app all within this one site, which is pretty amazing. And um, the person who started Replit actually used to watch my videos way back when. So, this uh, brilliant guy and his team were um, people just like you. And now they have a, a billion dollar company that's probably gonna be worth more and more and more, but it's an amazing system. You might wanna check out this auto GPT, which is really cool. In fact, if you want it to be a billionaire, in the next few years, which some of the people that watched my videos actually became billionaires. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm happy I could motivate. Obviously, not everyone's going to get there, but uh, I know at least five billionaires who started their journey to success at the same time they watched, um, they were watching my videos at the time, which were coming out in 2015 and 16. Um, if you wanted to become a billionaire, and again, you got to think seriously about why you'd want to do that, because it's not normal. Um, usually people who just want to be really wealthy or have serious uh, psychological issues. Um, and I'm not exempting myself from that. Um, you should want to be happy. <laughs> That's my advice. But assuming you want to make a lot of money, uh, you know, I would... Uh, if it were me, just drop from planet Mars today and on Earth, and you had to take advice, and I'm not saying my advice is better than anybody else's, by the way, I would say I would start by going on Replit, learning to program, getting into AI, and the highest probability chance of you becoming a billionaire is probably somewhere in that path over the next, say, five years. Um, that's what I would do. Am I happy? Yes, I'm very happy. <laughs> but that's, that's the path I would take. But yeah, if you, like uh, Rauchu is saying, I mean, if uh, you think being a billionaire is happy and you close your eyes and visualize it and you think about porn stars, yachts, and things like that, you're, you know, you're going to be in for, unfortunately, a rude awakening. Now, you still might become a billionaire, but it's going to be uh, maybe not as happy as you would uh, otherwise. Happiness is lame. Well, you could be happy by being a rebel, which I kind of, that's kind of what I've done a little bit, you know. If, if optimizing for the right amount of money is your goal or my goal, I don't think it should be anybody's goal. But you know, I, that's that's a hard thing to make make one happy. To me, happiness is is reading a book. To me, happiness is being with your friends and loved ones and family and, and laughing so hard it hurts. You know, that's what happiness is. Um, happiness is chasing my cat and vice versa. You know, the simple things. Um, you know, uh, work is, 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 can be very thrilling and very uh, satisfying, uh, but work just to work and just to make money is not. And you hope that those things will coincide or something, but, well, becoming a father or a parent is supposedly one of the most joyous things you can do. But what's funny about that is I think there's like this, and this kind of comes a uh, circular logic. There's kind of this, uh, you know, uh, involuntary evolutionary reason why you become, uh, it's something that's so satisfying, right? It's a biological imperative, as, as Eugene is saying here. It's, uh, now we've broken out of that mold to some extent, right? Um, but nature's trick is to unleash this wave of oxytocin or serotonin or whatever that you know, tickles our brain just right when we look at a baby. And look at look at me, when I see this cat, it, it melts my heart, she's so cute, she's so small, she's so innocent, I wanna nurture her and take care of her. And that's the biological imperative. And it's a hundred times heavier. Sometimes you call it baby fever amongst my 
my girlfriend or my other friends. Uh, when you see a baby, it's, oh, look at this poor little baby. Oh, I want to take good care of it. And, and that's just something your brain can't uh, stop. You know, if you try the hardest in the world, maybe if you're a sociopath or a psychopath, you, you can curb it or stop it. But most people, it's just, it's in our nature and, and you can't stop it. And I think that, you know, um, I've never liked that nature plays those tricks on us. But, but the funny thing I was going to say is that you, you can't help but whatever nature's trick is, like somebody's just saying they really like one certain kind of thing, uh, or maybe you really like programming, but whatever nature's trick is playing on you, you really don't have a lot of free will in the matter, right? And they have something called Ghostwriter. Ghostwriter's neat. Using Ghostwriter, it's sort of basically AI that writes some of the code for you. Um, you can actually, this is much, much better than what it used to be. When I was a kid, you have to open a program and basically just figure out how it works. And sometimes the way you'd figure it out is you'd like delete stuff and change stuff and see if how it would mess up the program or different, you know, make the program different. And then you'd run the program and say, oh, okay, I get this. But if you saw like a class definition or something, you wouldn't really immediately understand what that meant. Um, you'd have to go find a book or something to explain it or somebody who's a better programmer than you or whatever. Uh, so here, you can kind of do something a lot better. So let me maybe give an example. Here's Python. I'm going to create uh, this Python REPL. I haven't used this too much, but I've really been meaning to. All right, so, and they, they have, this is what the amazing thing. You have all these advanced tools, like this is a database called Postgres. It's a SQL database, structured query language. And uh, SQL is really important. It's one of the main skills I would learn um, for computers. But here's Ghostwriter. So it's 20 bucks a month, which is well worth it. And I'll, I'll subscribe to this. I don't want to do it with my credit card, so I end up showing my credit card on stream. But I'll, uh, I'll upgrade, maybe I can do it real quick. I always forget my CVC. Okay. I don't forget it, I just have a nervous habit of having to look at it. So anyway, here's Pro. So if you don't know anything about computer programming at all, right, which is most people, you know, and computers are running the world, if you haven't noticed, so you should probably learn something. Um, you just start typing, and in Python, the, the, uh, the comment is this uh, ampersand, or hashtag, or number sign. And you basically uh, can start typing the comment, like, make a program and you see it just starts typing you if I type press tab it'll say that but I would say something like this make a program that greets nibbles and then asks how many treats to give nibbles all right and I press enter and now the whole program is written for me And if I want to change it, I'll just go back up here and say, I ah, greets nibbles the cat. And then ask how many treats to give the cat. Asks the user how many treats to give the cat. Okay, let's see if that works. It's not, you know, it's not, AI is sort of not perfect, but. Here we go. So print. Hello, program that greets sniffles the cat, and then asks user how many treats to give the cat. And you can kind of like modify this a little. Again, it's not working maybe perfectly like we'd want, but it gives you the right clues that this print command seems to hold some sway. And this is obviously not an important program or anything. How many treats do you want to give the cat? Well, let's say five. That's it. How's it gonna make you money? Well, you certainly have to build from here, right? This won't make you any money. But I was talking to two of my coworkers, okay? Get this. Two of my coworkers started programming and then doing freelance work, okay? These are both six figure plus guys now. They started doing freelance work, get this, at 13. One of them's 19 right now. They're doing freelance work for clients at 13. Uh, neither guy went to college. And uh, yeah, you can make a more complicated program for sure. 
using Ghostwriter. So that's a really simple program. We could do something like import, uh, maybe I'll try it like this, uh, process a list of, hmm, let's see, something that would be impressive here. Okay, let's try this. Print a histogram of the distribution of digits of pi up to 5,000 digits. This is a complicated program. Let's see if this works. It just wrote, I don't know, 15 lines of code? I wonder if it'll work. This is incredible. I'll be shocked if this works. That is well, well worth the $20. No way. Come on, let's see it. All right. I'll be, I'll eat my hat if this works, but it looks like it's almost, almost there. I see these functions, but we never call the function. So let's call the function. Let's see if that works. Hey, there it is. All right, so I did everything except the one thing, which is run the program. But it ran the program, and this is, I can't see it too well, so let me uh, maximize here. This is, wow, look at this. There's even a window here. This is a distribution, I think. All the digits of pi, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, from 5,000 uh, 5, decimal places. It's, the x axis isn't labeled right, but that's all right. I don't even see the, the word pi in here. modify this a little bit. And again, the point isn't that it's going to write you a perfect program. The point is now you see how Python works. You see that you define a function this way. You have arguments like this, right? You see that uh, you can call the arguments this way, etc., etc. So the, the point isn't that uh, it's perfect. Uh, the point is that you asked me, how would you go about learning programming? This is how. And programming can be beautiful, frustrating, mind-altering, I don't know. And it can also make you wealthy, which, again, hopefully would not be your one priority. So if you started doing this and you hated it, it's unlikely to make you wealthy or happy. So you should stop. But if you did this and you say, oh, that's neat, I like this, then, uh, then you should do it. They do have a lot of AI stuff on here, yeah, yeah. I like books a lot, as you guys know who have watched me, but programming using books is not that great. You, you can do it, and I, I don't think it's that big of a problem. For example, there's this one book. I got this in prison for my prison buddies, and I gotta say, it's not a bad book. For a dummy's book, this is actually pretty good and pretty sophisticated. I mean, this guy's a PhD, so it can't be that bad. And actually, one of my first books that my father bought me at the computer store was... Oh man, I remember one of these. I need, I need to spend four, four or five dollars to get one of these. Q Basic Programming for Dummies. I probably still have it around the house somewhere. Douglas Her Herbert? I think it's Herbert. Anyway. Publication date, 1994. This was spank, brand spanking new at the time. You don't have that book, do you?